So as you can see, we're moving towards an era of autonomy across all phases of operations, starting with discovery, deployment, monitoring, remediation, and support. And the attributes of the platform, the capabilities, actually get magnified to the next level in our case because everything we do is pure software. And because it's pure software, we can run it anywhere we want, not just on our on, on your data centers, but also in our Xi data centers, and increasingly also on public cloud. So Dheeraj alluded to this a little bit in his uh, presentation. But what we've been working on is taking the entire Nutanix stack and porting it to public cloud. You saw a little bit of it with GCP when Julie was presenting. And we also have a tech preview of it running in AWS. And the way we have done it is a little different from everyone else. We actually took the time to integrate deeply into the Amazon services fabric, into their networking. So instead of running as a power-sucking alien running on top of AWS, we actually integrated into the AWS fabric, which means you can use your AWS credits, you can use your existing accounts, you can use your existing VPCs. You don't have to start creating all those things again. And that, that, that creates a lot of simplicity in operations. And because it's the Nutanix stack, it's a software stack, obviously it looks and feels exactly the same way as what you're used to, not just from the point of view of Prism running the same way across AWS and your private data centers, but also in terms of services like Era and Calm and Flow and Files also work exactly the same way on AWS. So let's take a look at that. And to help me with that, uh, please welcome Zankana. Rough. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Raji. So unlike uh, Steve and Laura, Zankana hasn't been with us all that long. She hasn't been with us uh, 10 years yet. But uh, so we'll check back with her life story maybe 10 years from now. <laughs> Alrighty. Show us what Zy Clusters is all about. So today I'm going to talk about Zy Clusters. Zy Clusters allows you to deploy Nutanix cluster, extend your data center in public cloud in minutes. So I'm going to show you how. I'm logging into my My Nutanix account, where you would see all the services that you are signed up for. And the new one here is Zy Clusters. Let's launch it. The first view you see here is the list of all the regions where AWS Bare Metal Service is supported. And you can essentially select any of the region to spin up Zy Cluster. I'm going to select Oregon, since I have VPN and Direct Connect configured for this region. Let's create, give a name, which cloud, which HV version you would want to deploy, host type, bare metal, number of host. Let's start with three, and you can expand as in you when you need. For networking, the default option selected here lets you deploy your Nutanix cluster into the default VPC and creates a subnet for it. However, most of the time, you already have a VPC configured in your AWS account, and you want to use that. So let's unselect it, click Save. What it's showing me is a cloud formation template, a link to a cloud formation template. Let's launch it. What you will see, it's taking me to my AWS account, and I'm going to sign in using the existing account, which means, again, what you just emphasized, I can use my credits, VPN, Direct Connect, all the investment that I've done. Let's sign in. Again, this is the CloudFormation template, and you can see all the information that I filled in from Zy Clusters. The only additional thing it's asking here is who's going to be the admin. It's going to be me and which VPC and subnet I would want to deploy this cluster on. Let's select that, acknowledge, and create stack. And that's it. In 30 seconds, I was able to start launching a Nutanix cluster in public cloud in AWS. Let's go back to Zy Clusters and say, yes, I was successfully able to launch it. And you will see in the clusters list where the new cluster is in the initializing state already. And in just about 30 minutes, it will be deployed and ready for you to use. So no hardware procurement, no network gateways to set up. In literally two minutes of workflow, we have a cluster being provisioned on Amazon. Exactly. Exactly. Beautiful. 
Let me take you to one of the Zy clusters that have already been running for some time. And what we're going to see here, it's exactly the same prism element that you have been used to using on the on-premises, but happen to be running in AWS. The hardware model is AWS, and that's the only difference, which means you get the same management stack, same services enabled in AWS as well. One thing you'll notice here that I have registered this Prism element to an on-premises Prism Central. Let me take you to that Prism Central. And here you will see, this is the Prism Central that I've been running on on-premises. And you will see here that you have two, register, two clusters registered. One is San Jose Prod, which is my on-premises cluster. And the other one is AWS cluster, which is the Xi cluster, which I just showed. Now. This is the true hybrid view where you can see all your usage, all your alerts, events across your data centers, on-premises, and cloud. A true hybrid view. Now, now that I've expanded globally, what the next thing I would do is I want to take the application that I've been running on on-premises, bring it to cloud. I have an application, which is a three-tier application, and I used Calm to deploy it. I'm going to take you to the Blueprint. And what you will see here is it's a three-tier app. I've modified the blueprint to actually deploy the user VMs, the proxy VM into EC2, and the DB using EDA server on Xi clusters. Why would I do that, though? I mean, why wouldn't I just run the database in RDS? Well, with Nutanix, again, you get the same management stack. You get all the goodness that we provide in the management stack, along with the AOS features like data replication, snapshots, et cetera. And you get much better performance compared to the provisioned IOPS. So, so better performance, same management experience, and uh, all the data capabilities around snapshots, replication, and so on that Amazon may not be providing. It's, it's beautiful. Correct. Correct. One more thing I wanted to point out here is you can see there's no gateway configured between these instances and Xi cluster VMs, which means you have no gateway, no overlay. Your application works seamlessly how it works on on-premises between Xi clusters and EC2 instances. What about security, though? If I'm moving my applications to public cloud, security obviously will be something I'm concerned about. Yes, again, same management stack. So for security, you can use micro-segmentation, basically flow. You will use flow. You have been using flow for on-premises. You have flow policies configured. Just take the exact same policies that you have been running for these applications. Apply it to the user VMs that you are, or application VMs you're creating in Xi clusters. And it just works seamlessly across. Yeah. And since there's no overlays, it's running natively on Amazon's networking. I'm assuming performance should be pretty good between all these VMs, right? Whether they're running on EC2 or on Xi clusters. That's correct. I'm going to show you first how we're going to deploy this, and then we're going to go into show you how the performance works. So I'm going to deploy this application, going with the Game of Thrones theme. I'm de deploying an app to track my dragons. And as you can see here, the ERA server I'm using, this is the Elastic IP that I've provisioned for the ERA server running in Xi clusters, which means I'm deploying, again, the DB using ERA on Xi clusters. Let's create. For networking, I would say, again, since these user VMs and the EC2 instances are, again, under the same VPC, you get the native networking performance that you would get between your instances running in AWS natively. So let me take you to the virtual machines that I have been running here and group them by cluster. You can see that I have an ERA server that I've been running for another app on the same AWS cluster. And what we are going to do here, we are going to launch a console, which for an ERA server running in Xi clusters in AWS, and we are going to execute a network performance command from this user VM in Xi cluster to another EC2 instance. And what we're going to see here is we are executing it against uh, IP 10.28.88, which is under the same VPC and subnet. And this will show us what's the bandwidth we are getting. And as you can see, we are almost getting around 22, 21, 22 gigabits per second. Close to Amazon's native networking speeds. That's beautiful. So what happens when I don't need these instances anymore? I mean, one of the big use cases for running on AWS is, of course, burst capacity. So maybe I created some databases, created some instances on Amazon. I don't need them anymore. What do I do? Yeah, 
for instances that you have been running for seasonal workloads or you've used for burst capacity, you don't want to keep paying for them, you don't want to keep managing those clusters again, what you can do is come to Xi Clusters, just select the cluster, and click Hibernate. Nutanix provides one-click Hibernate, which is one-of-a-kind functionality to Hibernate your entire cluster. What it does in background, it takes the data, copies it to S3, and power it off your instances. And which makes it, again, easier for you to resume those workloads back, which means just come, select a hibernated cluster, and hit resume, click Resume, and that's it. it. You just have to go to AWS and power it on your instances, and you get the environment in the same state back. So I can take my VMs, freeze them to S3, all the state will be preserved, and then days, weeks, months later, if I need it again, I can just resume it from exactly the same point. Exactly. It gives you the true benefit of elasticity to extend and shrink your workloads whenever you need. Perfect. Thank you so much, Ankana. Thank you. <clears throat>